Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I B reporting for the Media Speaks, once again asking Google, could you tell me whether or not I get two beeps before I go live or not? I don't care which one you pick, just let me know. Friends, uh, if you haven't been to TheMediaSpeaks.com, by all means, make sure that you go. Um, I also wanted to go ahead and mention right off the bat that I really wish that this Sandy Hook report that I wasn't about to get into. You know, I, I wish if there wasn't anything to hide here, that I wish they wouldn't hide the facts about the case from us. And that is why I called uh, this edition Sandy Crook on uh, the name of the show, because we, we are having the truth either stolen from us or at the very least hidden from us. And if that, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and this is from the Washington Times, so it's hardly an underground rag, now is it? Well, could argue rag. Sandy Hook investigators under fire for keeping some findings secrets uh, by Chuck K. Chumley. Investigators into the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Connecticut are poised to release the much-anticipated report of their findings Monday, but they've already warned that some information is going to be withheld. So now you have the people, the investigators themselves, admitting in the Washington freaking Times that they're going to be hiding information or withholding. Oh, that's another word for hiding information. And that's not sitting around with some who see the shield as unconstitutional. Well, that would be because it is constitutional. Imagine seeing it that way. Uh, a summer, that's, that's, that's like seeing him hit himself in the head. That's because he did. A summary of their findings, headed up by lead investigator of the December 14th shooting, State's Attorney Steven Sedensky III is going to be made available Monday afternoon, the Associated and Depressed reported. Yes, I just stole that. Rush. Omitted will be the entire evidence file, a stack of documents that's believed to span thousands of pages, and legal minds aren't happy about the whole back of information. What I found troubling about the approach of the attorney's office, of the state attorneys, is that from my perspective, he seems to have forgotten his job is to represent the state of Connecticut, said Dan Plow, a Hartford attorney with expertise in First Amendment issues in the AP story. Dr. Plow said releasing the full file is standard procedure in most investigations in the state. Yeah, unless, of course, you know, you're trying to hide something. And if you don't want us to think that, then you shouldn't act like you're hiding something. That's like, uh... I'm not hiding nothing. No, why would you think that? Um, his conduct, Mr. Klaus said in the AP story, in many instances has seemed more akin to an attorney in private practice representing Sandy Hook families. The shooting in Newton left 20 children and 6 adults dead. The report that's due for release hopefully provides some information about the gunman, Adam Lanza of 20. Oh, it'll only be things that, you know, will further make them, well, make you want to believe, in fact, that this, that's all there is to see. There's nothing else there. No. Well, there is something else there, of course, if you can demonize guns. You know, if you can demonize guns now, we've got some stuff for you. I'm going to go on, guys. I saw a story from Mars. And uh, I figured my viewers uh, tune in to the correct views for insights that they don't get in other places. Uh, that is Mars for you, uh, Kesha fans. Um, I'm going to do just that once again. I'm going to use the science on a Mars meteorite to prove to you just how bad uranium is from the Fukushima disaster. Because they're talking about cesium, they're talking about strontium. Well, they're hiding just how long uranium actually lives. Uranium and plutonium, you notice they don't like to talk about those very much. Well, let's just see what this Mars meteorite can reveal to us about Fukushima, shall we? This is uh, news.sky.com. A meteorite from Mars found by Bedouin tribesmen in the Sahara last year has been used to determine the red planet's crust was formed 4.4 billion years ago, scientists have said. American and French geologists found 
tough crystals within the meteorite called zircons, which held traces of uranium, whose rate of decay can be used as a calculator of age. Oh, but it, it dissipates, Sam. It absorbs into the sea. And it's not a problem anymore. And it's going to die out. The date is about a hundred million years after the first dust condensed in the solar system, said Menara Haimuen, a professor of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Science at Florida State University. It goes on, we know that Mars had a crust within the first 100 million years of the start of planet building, and that Mars's crust formed concurrently with the oldest crusts on Earth and Moon. The rock, measuring 1.5 inches across and weighing 2.9 ounces, carries the official designation of NW7533, no one's ever going to remember that. And it means that it was uh, northwestern Africa where it was found. It was discovered in near Bur Anzarin in south uh, Morocco and has a sister and even more famous, and it goes on, and she's called Black Beauty, and it lets you know why she got that name. Um, I, I want to get to the bigger picture here. The, geo the geo geochemical mashup probably explains why Black Beauty has a far younger estimated 2.1 billion years. So not only do we know uh, that, uh, again, many of these facts uh, about the crust of Mars, but for you Fukushima followers like I am, they have used it based on uranium. Still there. Still giving radioactivity off all of these millions of years later. That is what is being dumped, in part, into the Pacific Ocean at 300 tons per day. When you look at it in the other articles, they spell out exactly what uranium is, and it's what they hide when you're looking at the Fukushima articles. Uh, friends at RedFlagNews.com ABC kills West Coast evacuation story, but why? Uh, maybe ABC is starting to realize what Sam I B, yours truly, has been saying since day one of Fukushima. Evacuate the west coast of the country! That's what GE and the good things they brought to our life. Remember that when you go shopping. Remember not to support GE on anything, even if you got to pay more to get something different. Why? Because it's GE that brought all this death to us, that's why. They're the ones who own TEPCO. They're why we should be evacuating the west coast of the U.S. Why did ABC7 News in San Francisco kill a story that shared that a west coast evacuation might soon be necessary because of Fukushima? While Google, Google Cache clearly shows the story, the links take you to a page not found site, even though the Google search link is there. Screenshots of Cash Story and a Google search link showing this dead story are below, and it is. In the condensed story, Dr. David Suzuki, a one of Canada's top environmental scientists, stunned the audience when he described what will happen if a massive quake did hit today. Why is ABC censoring the story? Who gives a damn? The correct views and the media speaks are not. It's bye-bye Japan, and everybody on the west coast of North America should evacuate, Suzuki said. Now, if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is, it says. Well, friends, I just told you what uranium is, and you've already seen quite clearly how long it lasts. They can use it to date the crust of Mars. Why would you wait for another earthquake to move out of there? California, the West, it's over, people. It's over. And those of you that stay there will be looking back at this video when I'm dead and gone talking about how correct I was because nobody will want to be living in California unless they medically find some way to solve this. Because right now, we don't have a way to solve it. You live there, you die of cancer. You die of heart disease. You get sick all the time. Do you have any questions? Uh, friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on the Bud K ad. Um, you can go to Bud K other ways, but we want you to do it by clicking on the Media Speaks first. Because when you do, you will be helping us grow. That's, that, that's how you do. And uh, not only that, you're going to be getting some of the coolest things you've ever seen. I'm going to give you some of, the, uh, some of the really cool things you 
maybe you've got somebody on your Christmas list that has one of everything, and you go to Bud K, you'll be shocked. The Secure Pro Credit Card Lock Pick Set, $9.99. Looks like a credit card. Uh, the Avalanche Mini Crossbow Tactical Pistol, 50 pounds, $19.99. Uh, anybody that hunts a uh, crossbow would absolutely love that. It's $20. Um, and do you know anybody that's into some of the, uh, the more fantasy horror movie things? I love my horror films, by the way. Uh, Undead Apocalypse Twin Sword Set with Sheath, $29.99. Friends, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Click on Bud K and just lose yourself in all the cool stuff that they have. Um, I'm going to go on. i got a few stories left, and uh, I'm going to leave you guys to cipher this one out in the comments. Alphormens.com, Obamacare, the neutron bomb that will decimate the U.S. economy. Longtime readers, it says, know that I have repeatedly explained why health care, which is sick care, will bankrupt the nation. Obamacare simply speeds up the coming collapse. Here are two of the dozens of entries uh, that I have written on sick care, and he lists sites to them. Um, I'm going to go on to here to the actual meat and potatoes of this. Sick care is unsustainable for a number of interlocking reasons. Defensive medicine in response to a broken malpractice system. That means doctors having to buy insurance. He's laying out why we have problems in this country, and I'm going to decipher all of this for you. Um, too much medical malpractice insurance is needed. You can sue a doctor for anything and destroy him, and he's constantly trying to buy insurance from that. He's constantly afraid to do his job, and that's one of the problems. Um, opaque pricing, uh, blacking out how much the price is really going to be. Quasi-monopolies and cartels are medical systems set up in such a way that only certain people can get in, and those who might be able to do so cheaper are forbidden from doing so. Systemic disconnect of health from food. Uh, people eating regardless of whether it's good for them or not. People don't think in terms of what they eat, in terms of uh, how it helps their health anymore. Diet and fitness, that speaks for itself. Fraud and paperwork consume at least 40% of all sick care funds. Of all the funds available for health care, almost half, 40%, are eaten up in paperwork. Fee-for-service in the cartel system. Um, employers being responsible for health care, those are both, uh, those are both uh, obvious. And the fundamental absence of competition and transparency, that goes back to be people being left out. Um, please glance at these charts below, it says, and it shows you how things are going bad. Um, and here's what he says causes this. Here's what's causing so much bad health in our nation. And there's six of them, and I think they're worth noting, all of them. Deceptively labeled unhealthy packaged food. In a hurry, poor choices, diet, sedimentary consumer lifestyle. I admit, I tend to eat like garbage when I get off work at 3 in the morning at my other job. And, uh, you know, I finally bought a fruit salad because I just got sick of eating fast food. I'll ask you, Christelle. Autocentric built environment not conducive to walking or biking. Uh, not enough room for the walk. I don't know. It's, I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that one. Most places there, you can bike if you really want to get off your fat ass and do it. Um, I want a pill. Blame some else for my blame someone else else for my ill health mentality. Yeah, they want a pill for everything. And if you make yourself sick, they want to blame other people. They want to say that, oh, my mom beat me when I was young, so now i got to take all these pills because my mind is all messed up. And get over it. Uh, poor public health education in schools, universities, and media. I uh, completely agree with that. Schools are horrible teachers for just about anything anymore. A uh, profit-driven pharmaceutical and healthcare industry profits from illness, not health. That is very true. The drug companies make more money, as I'm about to get to, when people are sick. So they, they, they put things in that direction so that they can make more money. Uh, just uh, one in seven U.S. workers has a normal weight uh, without a chronic health problem. The Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare, is a neutron bomb for employment. Um, and it goes on to say why. Some of these I don't agree with. Like, I do believe that employers have been too stingy with who they give insurance to. And that's what's led this to begin with. I used to work, I always talk about this greedy bastard, Fred Nero, that owns Yellow Cab in Canton. He'd be driving around in these decked out cars, and you know, you wouldn't have enough money to eat after working and paying everything for the car. 
And, uh, you know, no insurance, no nothing. People like him are the reason that people got so angry that they let a, an abysmal idea like Obamacare get through. And uh, that there is just pure and simple fact. It really is. Uh, do I have a, oh, yeah, I do have this. I forgot that I had saved this. Um, interesting chart that goes along with what he was saying. As I go into the next story, I guess I'll just leave this up so that everyone can see it. Um, and the numbers speak for themselves, for those of you that want to say that, you know, I'm making it up. There you go. As I do so, let me remind you the wonderful things that uh, our, uh, our ever-present uh, pharmaceutical industry system does for us. Before I get into this, and it's from the independent.co.uk, um, I want to I differ from a lot of what you're going to hear from other uh, reports, like natural news in some places. And there is a great misconception that, that people that want antibiotics do not need them. And here's how the theory goes. It says, antibiotics work to kill a bacterial infection, but do not work for a virus. Therefore, if you have a virus, you do not need antibiotics. Horse manure. Horse manure, all right? BS. Why? Because you get a virus, which is not helped by an antibiotic, I admit that. But then the virus creates phlegm and build up in your lungs, and you get caught, what do you get? A bacterial infection. And most people do need antibiotics when they have a viral infection because it is causing a bacterial infection in them. Use the thinking part of your brain. Um, what is the solution? Um, hit at least 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day and take two echinacea per day. I also take cinnamon, calcium, uh, selenium, and uh, fish oil. Friends, the problem is not the over-prescription of antibiotics, although I don't think we need to be feeding it to the cattle like we do in the food industry. I mean, they give it to animals that aren't even sick to make sure they're not. I don't think that's a good idea. But for people, the problem isn't that too many people have got antibiotics, or at least as much, as it is a problem that the pharmaceutical industry are greedy. There are, as I'm about to get into, superbugs that are getting out of control and the pharmaceutical industry isn't making drugs for it because it's not profitable to make antibiotics right now. Now, you know, they'll do it again just as soon as some superbug starts wiping out masses of people so they can again get money off of it. They are the problem! Superbugs could erase a century of medical advances, experts warn. Let me give you the real, uh, let me give you the real. The greedy pharmaceutical industry could erase a century of medical advances, I warn. Um, I'm going to get into, it makes me sick, I'm going to get into this. Uh, it once reloaded. So as it reloads, I'm going to pull this picture out. It just makes me disgusted because these... Pharmaceutical industries know exactly what it is that they're doing to people. They're well aware of it. Um, Drug-resistant superbugs represent one of the gravest threats in the history of medicine, leading experts have warned. Routine operations could become deadly in the very near future as bacteria evolve to resist the drugs that we use to combat them. This process could erase a century of medical advances, say government doctors, in a special edition in the Lancet Health Journal. Although the looming threat of antibiotic or antimicrobial resistance has been about for years, has been known about for years, the new warming reflects growing concern that the NHS and other national health systems already under pressure from aging populations will struggle to cope with rising costs of medical care for people in a post-antibiotic era. Uh, it doesn't get to the greed part, it's all buried in here, so let's see if we can find it, shall we? Uh, in a stark reflection of the seriousness of the threat, England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Professor John Watson, said, I am concerned that in 20 years, if I go into the hospital for a hip replacement, I could get an infection leading to major complications and possible death, simply because antibiotics no longer work as they do now. About 3.5 million antibiotics are prescribed by GPs in England every year. The more the drugs circulate, the more bacteria are able to revolve against them. Also, if you don't take all of your bottle of antibiotics, even when you're feeling better, you are part of the problem. 
In the past, drug development kept pace with evolving microbes, with a constant production line of new classes of antibiotics. But drugs have ceased to be profitable, and a new class has not been created since 1987. The problem is the prescription drug makers, not the prescribing of antibiotics. Without antibiotics, it talks about the dangers that can come in about surgeries and all that. But, and you know, again, read the article, independent.co.uk. But the problem here is that people largely know, unless they're a hypochondriac, know when they need antibiotics. The trouble isn't that they, that they have a virus. The trouble is that their virus is causing a bacterial infection, which means we need more antibiotics. And maybe it's time for the pharmaceutical industry to care about something other than the bottom line while there's still enough people alive to pay. <coughs> the last story I'm going to get to, um, this is from ZeroHedge.com. Former Fed quantitative easer confesses, apologizes, I can only say I'm sorry, America. I'm going to go ahead and read this. This is interesting. This is by Andrew Hessazar. Confessions of a quantitative easer. For those of you that don't know what that is, that is the printing of money in unbelievable amounts to give the, uh, to give the economy the false sense that it's doing okay when in reality it really isn't. Look up the Weimar Republic in Germany. We went on a bond buying spree that was supposed to help Main Street. Instead, it was a feast for Wall Street. And I can only say, quote, I'm sorry, America. As a formal, former Federal Reserve official, I was responsible, he writes, for executing the centerpiece program of the Fed's first plunge into bond buying experiment, which is known as quantitative easing. The central bank continues to spin QE as a tool for helping Main Street, but I've come to recognize the program for what it really is. The greatest backdoor Wall Street bailout of all time. Yeah, the big, the big, big boys got it. Five years ago this month, on Black Friday, the Fed launched an unprecedented shopping spree. By that point in the financial crisis, Congress has already passed legislate, had already passed a legislation the Troubled Asset Relief Program, to halt the U.S. banking system's free fall. Beyond Wall Street, though, the economic pain was still soaring. In the last three months of 08 alone, almost two million Americans would lose their jobs. It says uh, the Fed said that it wanted to help, though the new program of massive bond purchases, there were secondary goals. But Chairman Ben Bernanke had made clear that the Fed's central motivation was to affect credit conditions for households and businesses, to drive down the cost of credit so that more Americans hurting from the tanking economy could use it to weather the downturn. For this reason, he called the initiative credit easing. So it helped everybody, right? My part of the story, he writes, began a few months later. Having been at the Fed for seven years until 08, I was working on Wall Street in spring of 09 when I got an unexpected phone call. When I come back to work for the Fed's trading floor, the job managing what was the heart of QE's bond buying spree, a wild attempt to buy 1.25 trillion in mortgage bonds in 12 months. Incredibly, the Fed was calling to ask if I wanted to quarterback the largest economic stimulus in all of U.S. history. So he said he thought it was a dream job, and he went there, and uh, they worked feverishly to preserve the impression that the Fed knew what it was doing. And here we go! It wasn't long before my old doubts resurfaced, and despite the Fed's rhetoric, my program wasn't helping to make credit any more accessible for the average American. From the guy that wrote it, the banks were only issuing fewer and fewer loans. They were keeping the money for themselves, people. More insidiously, whatever credit they were extending wasn't getting much cheaper. So it didn't help the average person. QE may have been driving down the wholesale cost for banks to make loans, but Wall Street was pocketing most of the extra cash. So the people that caused the problem on Wall Street now got a bunch of good money for it under the name of helping the people that they screwed who didn't get any help at all. From the 
trenches, several other Fed managers also began voicing the concern that QE wasn't working as planned, it says. Our warnings fell on deaf ears. In the past, Fed leaders, even if they were ultimately errant, would have worried obsessively about the cost versus the benefits of any major initiative. Now the only obsession is seemed to be with the newest survey of financial market expectations or the latest in-person feedback from Wall Street's lending bankers and hedge fund managers. Sorry, U.S. taxpayer. So, what do we have to show for all that we did? We have the rich people on Wall Street, richer than ever, and we have the average American losing their home. So where are we today? The Fed keeps buying roughly $85 billion in bonds a month, chronically delaying so much more as a minor QE taper. Over five years, its bond purchases have come to more than $4 trillion. It was supposed to be $1.25, remember? Amazingly, in a supposedly free market nation, QE has become the largest financial markets intervention by any government in all of world history. As for the rest of America, good luck, because QE was relentlessly pumping money into financial markets during the past five years, and it killed the urgency for Washington to confront the crisis. So now you have the person that helped set this in motion, apologizing and admitting that it was a dreadful idea. Friends, you've been listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. If you have not gone to the Arcadia Grill, please do so. Look them up on Facebook. Let the Arcadia Grill know you heard about them uh, from the correct views. You wouldn't believe how much that helps me. Um, their food? Delicious. You like spaghetti and meatballs? You have no idea exactly how good spaghetti and meatballs it can actually be until you've had it there. Friends, thank you for listening. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look at the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. I got a brand new article up called The New Drinking Drug that you've absolutely got to read. It's one of the strangest things I've ever come across. And it prevents the uh, crazy mothers against drug driving from stealing any more money from you, which is even more wonderful. Friends, thank you for listening. Good night, God bless, and please share this video with someone. Good night to my live listening friends.